Hello everyone, as you can see, I'm talking about the flat earth again, specifically how the stars work in the flat earth. For those of you who don't know, one of the best evidence against the earth being flat is the southern stars, especially the southern celestial pole, because that would make no sense unless we're on a globe earth that's rotating. Unless there's a flat earther who can come to the rescue and explain it away. Enter Eric Dubé, he's a sort of popular flat earther. And in typical Eric Dubé fashion, the video of his that I'm responding to doesn't have any dialogue in it, but instead uh, he goes through the minimal effort of creating diagrams and then putting text on those diagrams and expecting us to read the video. So I'm gonna read it aloud for you. Sorry if it becomes confusing, but that's what we have to work with. So starting off, all stars rotate east to west around Polaris, just above the central north pole, like in a planetarium dome. Our Earth planetarium, however, is so vast that perspective doesn't allow you to see the stars from any one vantage point. This doesn't make any sense. He'll go on to call this phenomenon the land horizon, but there's no reason to assert that you would be missing half the stars because of perspective. I mean, yeah, perspective would make the stars that are farther away harder and harder to discern, but they would also appear much closer together as they approach the vanishing point, or at least that's what you would call it in art or graphic design or whatever. But this is something that we simply don't observe. And yeah, we only see half of the stars in the night sky at any one time. So how do you explain that? You can, however, see Polaris, Ursa Major and Minor, and other northern constellations from every point on Earth all the way to the southern tropic of Capricorn. Well, parts of these constellations may be seen for quite a distance, but that's because some of these stars are further down. But the North Star and North Celestial Pole cannot be seen past the equator. It seems you're suggesting that they can, but they can't. They just can't. The supposed South Pole star, Sigma Octantis, the Southern Crux, and other outer constellations conversely cannot be seen simultaneously from every point in the Southern Hemisphere the way Polaris can from every point in the North. Well, you're right about Sigma Octantis, but that's only because you can't really see it in the first place. It's so dim, it's hardly visible to the naked eye, but... Nitpicking aside, this is just untrue. The southern celestial pole comes into view at the equator, and you can see it pretty much anywhere in the south. I take it that Eric here hasn't been to the southern hemisphere. Nor do the southern constellations circle around it west to east as claimed by modern astronomy. No matter where you are on Earth, all stars rise more or less in the east and set in the west, with the angle or inclination being based on where exactly you are on Earth and what direction you're facing. Okay, here is a time lapse of the southern celestial pole. This is what modern astronomy claims, and this is what we observe. I'm not entirely sure what you're getting at, but I'm pretty sure you're wrong. Similarly, they claim the moon viewed from the northern hemisphere is seen right side up, but when viewed from the southern hemisphere, appears upside down. As you can see here, this too is a drastic oversimplification, as the moon's features can be seen from 360 degrees of inclination, depending on from where or when on Earth you are viewing. Yeah, you're right, I agree, this is an oversimplification, but this is also kind of how it would be explained to a child. It's implied that this is the far north versus the far south uh, from the same longitude, but... Anywhere in between, yeah, we do see different angles, and that's completely consistent with the globe Earth. That's what we would expect. In fact, if the moon was as close as flat earthers say, then we would observe many more differences in the moon, as a person in the north and south would essentially be viewing opposite sides of the moon. I mean, hell, even as the moon went past on a normal night, you would see more of one side and less of the other just over the course of when it passes. And as you can guess, this is not something that we observe. As you travel southward from the North Pole, Polaris and its surrounding stars decline in the sky due to perspective. So at the North Pole, Polaris is situated directly 90 degrees above your head, 
but at the mid-northern latitudes, like here, it's about 45 degrees, more or less. Okay, sure, but geometrically, it would be 45 degrees in Antarctica, the very outer rim, assuming that this dome is a perfect hemisphere. But at any rate, there would be no way for any star to ever dip below the horizon, and obviously, it does. How do you explain that? Polaris remains fixed, while all other stars rotate 24-hour circles around it. The stars near Polaris rotate very slowly, while those further and further away rotate progressively faster. Okay, so far so consistent with the globe Earth. But, I mean, on the flat Earth, what makes these stars move? What makes them rotate and constantly change direction, or the term that we would actually use, revolve? What makes them do that? Is it magic? Okay, I guess we don't have an explanation for that. But, by the way, you do know that this exact same thing happens in the southern celestial pole, right? How do you explain that one? Okay, some basics before we begin. This is how our field of view works. No, that's... that's... bull. It seems like you know that you have to be missing a good portion of the night sky, and you're just making up some BS to make that happen. The only thing that could really cause this on the flat Earth would be like mountains and stuff in the way, which obviously that wouldn't account for what we see. You guys like to assert that perspective explains everything and then accuse us of magical thinking when it comes to gravity. But it's times like this where you show that you really don't know what you're talking about. But no, there's nothing that would stop a person from seeing beyond this land horizon unless, unless, this land was curved. Because the sky is far above, you can see much more sky than land. This, this doesn't make any more sense. You can say not to scale as much as you want, but if it was to scale, it wouldn't be any better. By this thinking, a person in the north would be able to see most stars, almost all of them. But this is simply not what we observe. No matter where you are on Earth, at any one point, at any one time, you can only see about half of the stars. You know, this is pretty easy to see. So, stars are turning around the dome. Okay, so this is how it would look. Right, so how is this possible? Scale, perspective, and horizon. Uh, none of that makes any sense. Maybe from your impossible scale, your ridiculous understanding of perspective, and very made-up, very ridiculous idea of what a horizon is. Scale. Earth is huge, but the sky is even bigger. You can actually see a pretty large chunk of it. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's a pretty basic observation that we only see half of the stars at any one time. Do you know anything about basic astronomy? Have you ever looked at a, a star map or a, a time lapse of stars? It boggles the mind. Perspective. The amount of sky we can see depends on where we are and which way we're looking. Okay, but we'd see much more of the sky than what you're showing because that sky horizon is bullshit. The sky that we see looks pretty much straight ahead, whatever direction we're facing. So for you to say that we're missing this much sky, we'd have to be looking up. It makes no sense. Horizon. The closer we are to the edge, the lower our totally legit sky horizon is from each side. But there's no way that we would be missing this much of the sky from the equator. This is so high up. We would definitely have line of sight to pretty much everything below that. The only way that we wouldn't is, surprise, if the Earth was curved. Apply star trails. Dots show where the star trails cross the sky horizon. And finally, this is where the second circle on the horizon is coming from. It's because we see the horizon as flat, so the lines get bent with perspective. Three exclamation points. He was really excited about that one. So it looks like second pole, but in reality, it's just a massive perspective warp due to the scale of the actual sky. And again, of course, this makes no sense. This argument relies on the idea that something 45 degrees up in the sky is somehow stretched down to the horizon with no explanation as to how or why. 
Not only that, but this fails to explain how we actually genuinely do see a southern celestial pole, and that from pretty much any point in the southern hemisphere, we can see the same stars. I mean, does this sky horizon go, like, all around the dome in the south? No, it doesn't. It's, this makes no sense. On the other hand, sky can be flat as well. Doesn't have to be a dome. Yeah, no, this, this makes even less sense. And that's not even half of this video. But I've already spent enough time on it, and quite frankly, the rest of it makes no sense. I mean, what we've seen doesn't really make any sense, but it makes even less sense as we go on. It's just like, like rambling. It's weird. It's weird. But I, I think there's a, a better uh, argument for the southern stars on the flat Earth that I would like to cover. So keep your eye out for that. Maybe it'll be next week. But thank you for watching this to the end. If you like what you see, consider subscribing because that's kind of what you do, right? And if you feel like I am worth supporting, that my videos are worth something, you can support me monthly via Patreon, and it's very much appreciated. But thank you all, and goodbye.